Yo, what is up you two? James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2019 Back to Back Battles. Today we are using this XY team for one last time. We got Xerneas, Yveltal, Ninetales, Incineroar, Landis, Farron, and Amoongus. If you haven't checked out the previous episodes, I highly recommend go checking them out. But otherwise, yeah, let's get started and play some games. So this team overall, again, I think it was really good about the time before Oceana Internet was happening. I think it might have actually been a good team go into the event with but however not exactly too sure about it now uh just after playing it a bit it's been a little bit tricky to use but i still think it's a decent team nonetheless i think maybe it just needs a few adjustments here and there and yeah i still think it's a pretty decent team overall of course the xerneas belt all core is super hard to work with in my opinion because it's super hard to patch uh matchups but yeah it's still pretty fun nonetheless and luckily we've been able to hit most of our snarls which has been really crucial because hitting snarls with this bulky Yveltal is very important to how this team plays as we got our first opponent from Italy with a team of Kartana, Kyogre, Landis, Farian, Senor, Xerneas, and Tornadas. Okay so got rid of the Amoongus which is actually really helpful because Amoongus is definitely the Pokemon that is really annoying for this team to handle so I'm very happy about that. Mm. Do I want to bring Ninetales or do I want to bring Incineroar is the question. Because I'm actually, like, I don't actually want to bring Ninetales. Stalander seems a little bit annoying to handle. Well, I could maybe get some fake up pressure or I could go Incin, which is actually not that bad of an idea. I think I'm going to go Yveltal and Moongasleep for sure here. And the question is what do I want in the bag? Xerneas 100%. It can sweep my opponent's team under the right conditions. Then the last Pokemon's tricky because I could bring a lot of Pokemon here. I could bring the Nine Tails uh, to cancel out the Weather from Kyogre. I could bring the Incineroar for the Intimidate as well as handle the Kartana. And I could bring the Landorus just as another backup answer to the Incineroar. But I'm thinking Incineroar just because I feel that having a switch into Kartana plus the. Landers is pretty important, and also I want a way that I can knock out the Kartana potentially. And Fake Out Pressure is just really good with the Xerneas setup, I feel like, especially since I could probably pick up some knockouts quicker than my opponent if you're leading something like Kyogre, for instance. And yeah, I'm really afraid of maybe Incineroar Amoongit. Incineroar Xerneas lead, which is why I want Incineroar in the back, as we're going to see the Incineroar Tornadus lead, actually. Okay. Landis would have been a great Pokemon here, but that's alright. I wonder if my opponent's going to hard U-turn into Kyogre. Uh, that could actually be pretty tough for me, but... Yeah, we'll see what my opponent does. Could be a fake out to Persona Sky Strike. Could be a fake out Taunt. Could be a fake out Tailwind. Could just go straight for a U-turn, or maybe even just go straight for the Flare Blitz if my opponent really wants to. I uh, definitely am going to go for a Snarl right here and switch into Instant, which is definitely my safest play. Incineroar is expendable. It's not absolutely necessary to win the game. Yvalto can also help win against the Kartana as well. And the land is under the right conditions. Uh, Incineroar is really only here for fake out pressure and intimidate. So we will bring out our Incineroar here. Get this intimidate off onto my opponent's side of the field. As let's see what my opponent's going to go for. Is it going to be a fake out? Is it going to be a U-turn? Go straight for the taunt into the Amoongus slot. Which is no surprise there. As we will be able to get Snarl off into my opponent. So we do get a decent amount of damage in the Tornadus. As well as... You know, some chip on Incineroar, which is important for Moonblast, plus two Moonblast. So we're going to see a Snarl from my opponent. Incineroar avoids. I don't think it's... I don't think it really matters too, too much. Unless maybe Timid, Max Special Attack, Xerneas, this, it would have made it more of a roll. But yeah, I think this is actually a pretty good situation here. We can go for another Snarl right here. Even though our Yveltos minus one, I don't really need the damage output. I just need to chip away at my opponent. And I'm thinking of either going straight for a low kick in Incineroar just for extra damage, or I could go for a U-turn. Then again, I don't Incineroar would most likely U-turn, if anything. So it might be better just to target the Tornadus for damage. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the Dark Pulse, I think, in the Tornadus. There's no point of snarling because I don't think Incineroar should um I think Incineroar should always U-turn out. I think I'm gonna U-turn. The Incineroar. I got a low kick too, but we're actually gonna see a Tornadus retreat. Interesting. Into the Landers. Okay, so that's not too bad for me. I get a free Dark Pulse into the Landers, and that's gonna hurt a bit, even at minus one. 
And I get to retreat my Incineroar, so Lander's actually going to make an appearance. So I wonder what that last Pokemon's going to be. As we will get Dark Pulse off in the Lander, so that should do maybe 30%. Ooh, not bad. And a U-turn does come out from my opponent, so I'm going to target on the Abeltal. Do an okay amount of damage. But the main part is I feel pretty good about our situation. We'll see what Pokemon get brought out next. So you either didn't bring Kyogre or you didn't bring Xerneas. And... I don't know, both are really interesting not to see, and also Double Genies, <laughs> the Landers Tornadoes combination. Haven't really seen this much since the um, 2013. Let's see, I could go Xerneas right here, because it applies a lot of offense to pressure. Because if I just get Xerneas in and I could switch into Instant, I could just Geomancy, right? I think I'm going to just go Xerneas right here. Yeah, I just don't see a reason not to make this play. So we'll get the uh, Xerneas in, and then we'll just hard switch in an Incineroar, and then I just don't see what my opponent can do. Because I could fake out the Tornadus, and Landis would be at minus one, unless Landis goes hard for the U-turn, but I think that'd be fine too, because like, Incineroar comes in, I just get to draw off Moonblast, if Kyura comes in, I could just fake out and draw off a Moonblast. And I have like, switches in the back. And I just need to weaken the Kyogre if it is in the back just to put it in the range of my uh, Sucker Punch. So I think it's fine. Unless Xerneas comes out, which I'm not exactly too sure if it will come out. We're going to see the Taunt into the Xerneas. And let's see what the Landers goes for as it is going to be just a Rock Slide. Okay. Uh, we don't know if it's Scarf, unfortunately. I just hope it does. it isn't Scarf because I don't want to flinch. I'd assume it could be a Z-move Landers, but... Yeah, we could go for a hard U-turn. No, fake out. Fake out the Tornash Geomancy. Yeah, because even if this is like a Z-move from Landers, a minus one Z-move is not going to knock out my Xerneas. Not by a long shot. So we'll just fake out the Tornas. Landers stays in. Uh, Tornas flinches. Okay, it's not Scarf Landers. Okay. So we're able to get a Geomancy off. And this is looking pretty rough for my opponent. Definitely looking very rough for my opponent. I wonder what the Landers is going for, though. A U-turn. Maybe a Tectonic Rage. It should be one of those options. Luckily, the Incineroar has Snarl, so I kind of doubt it carries Roar. We'll see what it has, though. As if we are going to see a Z-move from Landers, it will be the Ground Name Z. But minus one won't be able to knock out my Xerneas. And then I could just spam Dazzling Gleam here and be put in a pretty good spot. So we're going to see that Tectonic Rage come out. Um, yeah, we're gonna see a target Xerneas. How much is it doing? We also don't know if the Incineroar is assault vest or not. Okay, that did a lot less than I thought, actually. So now I can click Gleam. Because I know it's not assault vest on either of these two Pokemon. And I can just get Amoongus in. Because Amoongus can threaten the Xerneas, which is like the only Pokemon that could really concern me in the back. So I'm gonna go for the Dazzling Gleam right here and switch into Amoongus. Because having Incineroar in the back just as fake out pressure is just really nice overall. So, we'll see what my opponent can really do to reposition. Maybe a lander switches out on Incineroar, but we're going to see Tornaz actually switch out into that Incineroar. Okay, I do I do understand this play because you are pretty safe here from the Dazzling Gleam unless I click the Moonblast. But if you're Assault Vest Incineroar, you would have taken that too. Uh, we'll see what my opponent does though, but I'm guessing it's gonna be sack the Landers and try to get in your last Pokemon Which could be either the A, the Kyogre, or B, the... I don't agree with the Protect play I don't agree with the Protect play Uh, we get... Cause if you had Xerneas in the back, I think that was your only hope Unless you have Kyogre in the back Also, even if you had Kyogre in the back, I think going to Torn After sacking Landers and then getting Tailwind up Like, what's Landers doing here? Do you have Roar? Um, do I need a Moongus? Not really. I really don't need a Moongus. I'm gonna Rage Powder and uh, Protect. Uh, this just covers for a random Roar play, which is what I'm scared of. So my opponent just gonna stay in with both. Okay. Did he go straight for the Flare? That's a good play if the, you did, but I think I'm okay regardless. Earthquake. You knock out your own Ensign. Um, okay. Don't understand that. Don't understand that at all. <laughs> okay. Incineroar goes down. Let's see what the last Pokemon is. Or is Tornado's going to be come out once again? And I just click Gleam and then I switch out to Incin. It is Kyogre in the back. Okay. 
Did I just click Spore and I click... Yeah, I just click Spore and I click Leam and there's no drawback to this play at all. So yeah, interesting not to see Azernius on my opponent's side. Um, but yeah, we're still in a really good position. Surprised there was no Tailwind. But yeah, just Dazzle and Gleam should be able to finish off the Landis. Get like a decent amount to Kyogre. Yep, about half. Landis will go down and... Just a Water Spout, which is not going to KO the Xerneas at all. Yeah. And then we just get a Spore off. I'm pretty sure Yveltal just won at this point anyway, because we got enough Chip. If it was like a Psych of Kyogre, it didn't matter, because we got a Spore, and then we could have just gleaned Clear Smog the following turn. So no matter what, my opponent was very limited on options right there. So we're going to see Tornas come back out, and even with Tornas coming back out, I mean, we just click uh, Grass on and Gleam, and that would be... Well, Gleam just wants us to game, actually. Yeah, literally just Dazzle and Gleam wins us the game. There's no drawback to clicking Gleam here because there's no way, yeah, there's no way my opponent can come back. So we are able to pick up a victory. I'm just really surprised about Landers protecting because I think at that point you had to sack Landers and try to get yourself under Tailwind for a decent position. I guess it also depends on if the Kyogre is Scarf or not because if it isn't Scarf, you probably lose the game anyway. But you kind of need a Kyogre healthy and maybe just draw off an Origin Pulse and hope maybe you could crit the Xerneas at that point. Instead, you just sacked a bunch of Pokemon for no reason, and yeah, I was just able to get into a decent position there. And as I said, get into a position with Xerneas setup. Uh, having that fake out from Incineroar did really help, and yeah, I don't think Ninetales would have been too helpful, especially since my opponent did bring the Landers, and the Kyra was like the la very last Pokemon my opponent brought there, so yeah, luckily the Pokemon choices really worked out for us, and we were just able to pick up the victory, so. Nice, nice. As we got our next opponent from Japan, 1603 rating. Let's see. Um, Rose Raid. What team is this? It looks cool though. Zekrom, Sogaleo, Hydreigon, Tapufini, Rose Raid, Hitmon on top. Your Veltal's really good against my opponent's team. I just gotta be worried about the Zekrom. Like, Zekrom Fiend is actually kinda scary. Depending on the situation. Um. Probably no Nine Tails here. Landers is actually really good. Because it outspeeds. Does it outspeed? No, it doesn't outspeed Zogaleo, but it outspeeds Zekrom, which is pretty important. Hi, right, Dragon's also really interesting. Um. Lucas would be really good too. Ah, uh, there's so many Pokemon I want to bring. Like, I want to bring everything but Ninetales. <laughs> because Ninetales doesn't really help in this matchup. It just can't really... I mean, two knockouts, but that's it. I think Xerneas Landers is just such a solid option, though, as a lead. Because I don't see what's wrong with it. I have Yveltal on the back. I think I want to go Incineroar. Although, there's a gut feeling I do kind of want to bring the Amoongus. Because Amoongus could be really good here. But yeah, we'll go Incineroar and see how this goes. Because uh, I think Incineroar is really nice in this game. Like, I don't have to set up Zer as Xerneas at all. I don't think setting up Xerneas is to play. Like, all I need Xerneas to do is, like, knock out that Zekrom. Because Zekrom is, like, the most problematic Pokemon, I think, for my team to deal with. Also, this is really bad if it's, like, a Jolly, Max Speed, Sogaleo with the Z-Move. Because that actually really threatens my team. So I'm going to have to worry about that. But it's Feeny Zekrom leading. Okay. Um... Let's see, Lambda should be faster than Zekrom. Does Tarot Vault always go first? Oh, it's Scarf Zekrom. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, so we find out it's Scarf Zekrom, actually, huh? Uh, that's bad for my Yveltal, but I mean, I think that's fine for us. Misty Seed on the Fini. Okay, so it goes down to Gleam Tectonic Rage right here. I could Geomance if I really want to, but I don't want to catch a Haze. I don't... I think I'm just going to Gleam Tectonic Rage to Feeny. Because I don't want Icy Wind. I don't want Light Screen. I also don't want Heal Pulse later in the game. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Zekrom's not really doing much at minus one anyway. So, we'll go for this. Zekrom, I'm going to switch out into the Hydreigon here. So, that's perfect. Like, that's absolutely perfect. Give me your Hydreigon. I'll... Gladly take your Hydreigon. Take this Dazzle and Gleam. And ooh, look at that. Look at that KO. Look at that KO. Goodbye, Hydreigon. And say goodbye to your Feeny, because Tectonic Rage is going to blow it away. 
Okay. Did not expect a Hydreigon coming. Actually, what? What did Hydreigon do in the Smash Up? It's XY. You have nothing that can touch my Restricteds. I'm actually really surprised. Yeah, I don't get Hydreigon being brought here. At all. Maybe it's a ground resist? Maybe that's what my opponent's thinking? Like, maybe my opponent just, like, was so scared of this Landers? Oh, wow, that didn't KO. Oh, that didn't KO. Those for Nature's Madness, which is fine. Like, what's stopping me from Protect Earthquaking here? Because I can go for that, because Zekrom can't knock out Landers in one shot. I'd even go Feeny, uh, go and Sin if I really want to and click Gleam, because I might live Bolt Strike, but yeah, Zekrom's going to come back out. Do you have a way that I can touch Zekrom? Because I just don't think you can knock out my Landorus. Let's just protect Earthquake. I want to see. Like, I'm very confident that Yveltal can win as long as I put the Zekrom in range of Sucker Punch now. And that's pretty easy to do, so I'll just Earthquake. Eh, I probably should click Gleam Earthquake in case the Zekrom actually does have a way to knock out the uh, Landorus. Yeah, but it's just Bolt Strike into the Zekrom, so you're going to be taking this Earthquake, and then you put in Sucker Punch range, and then I should be able to win the game. So take the Earthquake, goodbye Zekrom, goodbye Feeny. well, not goodbye Zekrom, but you know what I mean. And then we'll see the Sogaleo come out, because I think you need to have Sogaleo on the back. We'll see the Imbring Sogaleo, which, yeah, it had to be Sogaleo, okay. I mean, Dazzle and Gleam Earthquake? Could be Wide Guard, but I don't even care if it's Wide Guard. It wouldn't even be... I think the only way Sogaleo can knock me out is with a uh, Life Orb Sunsteel Strike or a Zemu. So I think I'm just going to click Gleam Earthquake. Because I think that's fine, because even if, like, let's say the Sogaleo Wide Guard, I just get in Yveltal, and I click Sucker Punch into uh, Earthquake into the Zekrom, and then, yeah, I don't think my opponent Sogaleo can win against uh, Landers plus Incineroar. Because it is going to be Sunsteel Strike, it is actually Jolly Max Speed. So that is a little bit of a concern, although we should be able to live the Sunsteel Strike. And this is good physical defense, yeah. Jolly is really weak, so Earthquake going to come out. And yeah, now we just click Sucker Punch with our Yveltal. We click Earthquake once again, and that would be a good game because my opponent doesn't have any tools that can beat Yveltal. Plus Landis, and you don't... Yeah, there's really no way because you have to attack, and if you attack, Sucker Punch just KOs you. So we're able to gonna be, we're going to be able to pick up this win very easily, let me just say. <laughs> oh, man. I actually didn't expect the Phoenix to Tectonic Ratio. I guess it has Physical Defense. Sucker Punch... Earthquake, good game. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, and I imagine it's going to be far favorite. We're able to pick up a win. Uh, don't know. Don't know about that one. Scar's Ekron was cool, but like... Uh, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. Uh, I, what, what am I really able to say? I was just able to do a lot of Damage like I had so much pressure with just that lead like Xerneas uh, Landers lead is actually very intimidating for a lot of teams and Definitely proved there because it was just so solid To put on pressure against my opponent So yeah, we are able to pick up another win which is nice Maybe we could get one more for this uh, last team Maybe we could also bring the nine tails because I think nine tails could have some fun At least I hope this is the last episode I'm recording because I'm pretty sure it is yeah, this should be the last episode if I remember right. <laughs> Imagine if we have two more episodes with this team. But yeah, we also haven't really gotten used to Xerneas in the Ninetale cycle. But then again, like that's very situational. Like I only found myself playing, um, using that against Zern Lunala teams. Yeah. Like the only time I ever used that was like Zern Lunala teams. And it was still very rare that I got it off. Because like I would psych up their Xerneas and have some at least decent pressure. Or it's like a My Xerneas at the end. Or what I do is like I just overheat with nine tails and then just psych up just so I can get my rest my stats re um my stats rebuffed because it really did help. 
Because like, I throw off an overheat, psych up, get back to neutral, and then overheat again, which was like something interesting. I mean, Ninetales wasn't usually living that long, but it was definitely an option. It's uh, an error. We'll be right back with the uh, last game of today's episode. All right, we got a 1701 rated player from Japan as our last opponent of today. Zerndon with Gastrodon, huh? With Tapu Koko, Incineroar, and Venusaur. Uh, matchup? Not sure, actually. I mean, Amoongus is good in this matchup. I don't know if I want to bring it. Do I bring Yveltal? Yveltal is like decent, but it's not that great. I don't remember what I did against the last Zerndon with Venus where I played. Um, I don't know, because like Landers could be really good here. Maybe no Incense? Yeah, I think maybe no Incense to play. Which seems really weird to me. I think I want to go Landorus, Yveltal? Now I'd rather go Yveltal, Amoongus with Landorus in the back and Xerneas. Yeah, because I think I want Landorus for the ground immunity. Which I mean, Yveltal does have, but like... I'm not so sure about Instant. It's not bad in this matchup, it's just I'm not exactly sure how to put it. I don't think the fake up pressure is going to be that great against my opponent's team. I felt like I need a Moong in this matchup to handle the Xerneas. I feel like Landers is so crucial for the switching to Tapu Koko as well as the Incineroar that I think it's just necessary because I think I need that Tectonic Rage. Because I think Tectonic Rage is like super important in this matchup because I think I need to get a KO onto the Incin immediately because I can't really afford Incin next to Xer- because I can't afford um like normally I could leave Incineroar on the field but it really depends with the Xerneas Plus, like, all the other Pokemon. I just don't think it's worth it because, like, I feel what could happen is fake out rotation. It's just a bit too annoying. As we're going to see. Okay. Ah, oh, man. I really wish I had the, uh... Oh, I wish I let Landis now because this is a pretty bad lead for us. I mean, it's not that bad, but it's not that great either. Um, I guess I could go for Snarl plus... Okay, I wish I brought Incin now because this might be important. Like, I didn't want to bring Incin because I felt like I had to get rid of the Incineroar immediately. But now, this might not be the best spot. Um, I'm going to Snarl. And I think I'm going to go for the Spore in an Incin slot, actually. Actually, maybe Tapu Koko comes in. Would you bring Tapu Koko? I'm not exactly too sure though. I don't think it would bring Tapu Koko. Definitely a possibility if my opponent wants to play Protect the Deer. Maybe we should just clear Smog Xerneas, but I could see Xerneas also going for a Geo uh, Protect plus a Flare Blitz just coming up for an instant or maybe a U turn. So there's so many options my opponent has with this lead. It's just I'm not sure. Oh, go straight for the Moon Blast into. Oh, you're doubling it up. I knew I should have went Landers and just board. Oh, that's bad. Well, at least Ernie's didn't set up, which is a very positive note, actually. But, yeah, that's not exactly the best for us. Because I didn't... Like, that was an option. I just didn't think my opponent would go straight for it. So, ah, it got me there. Yeah, Flare Blitz. If I had Aka Berry, this made so much trio. And I keep telling myself I had Aka Berry, but I don't have it in my game. All right, so we lose Amoongus here. It's not the end of the world, though. For sure. Um... Because we're going to go our... we go Xerneas right here? Nah, I don't think we can risk a roar. I'd rather go Landis here. And I think I'm going to Sword Stance. And Snarl. I think it's my best option. Yeah, I think it's my best option. So I'm going to Snarl and the Sword Stance. Expecting Incin to switch out. Um, and... Yeah, I got to hope that I can get Sword Stance. Because like, I don't want an Earthquake here. In case my opponent decides to sack something that my opponent has in the back. Maybe like a Tapu Koko. Because I want to be able to get a Earthquake off. I want to get a uh, boosted Earthquake off and threaten the Xerneas. And Xerneas isn't doing much right now. Even if you Geomancy, you're going to be at minus two. So Inton is going to retreat here into the Groudon, which is fine. Because plus two Earthquake is looking to do a lot of damage to my opponent. And also the Xerneas again. It's not doing much damage. So we'll see what the Xerneas does. Maybe just keeps throwing off Moonblast, which would be fine. Because it's not really doing that much damage. But protects. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. We're back in this game. Okay. So we get a Sword Dance off, which is beautiful here. And then we're going to be able to go for Earthquake. 
And Earthquake gets a KO here, so that is very good. It's not all it does. How much did the ground on? I want to say Sucker Punch and Earthquake might get the ground on, but I'm not exactly too sure. I mean... I think the best play is always just a Dark Pulse, the uh, Groudon and Earthquake here. I get Tectonic Rage to Groudon too, because I think Xerneas does retreat here into... No, but it probably goes in instant, so even if I knock out the Groudon, the problem is there is always the Fake Out Pressure. So I'm just going to Earthquake Dark Pulse, because like if I don't KO Groudon, I get a chance to flinch. Which is probably one of my best odds right here. And yeah, I can't really afford... Maybe I should Swords Dance again, in case the Groudon protects. But here's the thing, I think Groudon should go for Fire Punch to put my Landers in range with a Moonblast. Um, I guess another play I could have done was just Dark Pulse the Groudon and protect Landers. Nah, I don't think that works. We're gonna see Xerneas retreat here like it should. Gonna be out into the instant or yeah, pretty much what I expected here. Maybe Earthquake will put the Groudon range to where Dark Pulse can knock it out if it's not... If the berry doesn't activate, so maybe that's like my hope here. Like that's what I'm hoping. But we'll see. As we do get an earthquake off into my opponent. Ah, I think it's gonna be a 50-50 the following turn. Oh yeah, that's there's no way I knock out with Dark Pulse. I needed to do a little bit more to that Groudon, so we will get Dark Pulse off. But this will not KO in the le Oh, it almost did with a critical hit, but um I mean, that kind of helps. Not exactly too sure, though, as we're going to see the Fire Punch come out. It does hard on the Landris, which will do, like, half. Yeah, a little less than half, but I'm in range of Moonblast, which is the scary part. So I'm just going to come back out. I feel like it doesn't Geomancy this time, but I think this is where the turn matters. Like, does Xerneas protect? Does it Geomancy? Or does it draw from Moonblast? Because all three are very potential options right here. I think... I got a bank on my opponent going for the attack here. Because I don't think... Hmm. Yeah, I think it's my best out. We're going to see the ground on retreat here into Venusaur? Tapu Koko, okay. I think you have to Moonblast the Landers then, because I don't get the Tapu Koko coming in. Or you Geo here. But I don't think you should Geo, because I could Tectonic Rage threats into Xerneas. Yeah, Moonblast. Yeah, and Atlantis. Okay, so I got that right. So I'm hoping with the Snarl I should live one. Then I can Tectonic Rage to Xerneas. And if I get the Tectonic Rage into Xerneas, like that might be game. Uh, this could be Wild Charge to Hapa Coco though, which I am very scared of. Because like if it is Wild Charge, that could be like game changing. Uh, I definitely Tectonic Rage to Xerneas here. Uh, but then again, if Tapu Koko has an attack here that could touch the Landers, like, I might be screwed no matter what. So my best play is just a Snarl and Z-move, I think. Because damage in the Xerneas does matter here. And maybe I could find a position where I can set up my own Xerneas to Geomancy. I see a Z-move from the opponent, so it's going to be the Electrium. Okay. Is it physical or special? Because I don't think this knocks out the Veltal at all. I don't think this knocks out the Veltal at all, actually. This could be a really good position for us, though, because since my opponent didn't target down the Landorus, if it's timid, right? If it's timid, now speeds my Landorus. I don't think Moonblast KOs after minus one. Yeah, and that Tectonic great. Uh, that Z move didn't do much thanks to Snarl. Moonblast, okay, moment of truth. Landorus, we're 60%. We should live this. 1 HP, clutch landers, clutch. Okay, nice. We're going to be able to go for the Z-move now. That is awesome. Okay, landers really putting in some work. So we're going to be able to knock out this... We're going to be able to knock out this Xerneas, and then we can go for Earthquake. And we can go for... What do I want to go for into the uh, round? Dark Pulse is probably my best play. Yeah, so we're able to knock out the Xerneas. Huge, huge damage. That is coming in clutch. Okay. And we get our Snarl off, which is great, because that allows my Xerneas to set up in front of this top of Coco, unless it carries Taunt. So, yeah, we're in a very solid position now. I don't even have to set up, I think. I could probably just go... Uh, I could probably just damage the uh, Groudon one time with Earthquake, and that should be able to pick up the win. So we're going to see the Groudon come out, and I will Oblivion wing the Groudon because that should put in range of a neutral Moonblast from my Xerneas, and we'll go for the Earthquake here. 
If my opponent doesn't have a way that can touch Landers, like this game is probably over. As this match is going to be forfeited. So I'm guessing the top of Coco, maybe trip, triple electric, maybe a Thunderbolt, Discharge, Volt Switch, I would assume. So yeah, nice. We're able to pick up a win from what was really a really bad position turn one into really good stuff. Yeah. That was definitely a good play on my opponent. Like, I didn't think my opponent would actually go for the Moonblast Flare Blitz immediately because sometimes the XY teams do run Akaberry on the Moon. It's just because it helps because their Incineroar match was pretty poor. But my opponent definitely got me there. And yeah, definitely super scary. So we were able to come back with our Landers, gain that Sword Stance up, which was super crucial. Getting that read right with the Does Xerneas go for the Moonblast, Protector Geomancy that one turn. We got it right with the Moonblast, and luckily we were able to um, just put ourselves in the position where Landers could survive the Moonblast, thankfully, and get a Tectonic Rage off and knock out the Xerneas, and then we were just able to win the game because we already got the Tepa Coco and Minus 2 and the Ground Super Weakened already. But hope that you enjoyed today's episode of VGC 2019 Back to Battles. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like down below, show support. So as you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description, sub to my social media and the sizes on my channel and all that good stuff. If you want to try out the team, there is a pastebin of it linked down below in the description as well. And if you do want to go check out my Patreon page where if you want to go an extra mile to support my channel, there is always that link down below. But you can help out this channel for free by doing the following things, leaving a like on the video, uh, sharing this video with your friends, and of course leaving a comment down below. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Have a great day, people. Until we battle again, I'll catch y'all later.